And uh, just to uh, let everyone know, next week we got Fun Fest coming up, and we got an official sponsor. Uh, if you're gonna uh, pledge, uh, if you want to pledge to Word of Mouth Wednesday, look out for the G20 Exposed uh, documentary. Is gonna be an official sponsor for uh, Word of Mouth Wednesday for Fun Fest. Uh, so we're gonna have incentives like the DVD. The premiere was at Ryerson University. And we had about 200 people come out, and everybody was supporting us. Especially against the Week, we'll be ending tomorrow. And it's the first G20 Exposed documentary in Canada, so we want this to be on everybody's shelf. We want people to realize that there was uh, more to the story than what you were told. And it's important that we stand up for Canada. All Canadians need to see this film because it happened on their country. Our uh, Canada was turned into Nazi Germany for uh, the weekend. So we have uh, a story of, uh, of a gentleman, his name's John Prune. He's a 57-year-old Revenue Canada employee. He was there at the G20 peacefully sitting down at Queen's Park, which was the designated area for peaceful protests. And uh, his leg was ripped off him, his amputee prosthetic leg. Uh, five police officers tackled him to the ground. They labeled his leg a whipping. So when things like that are happening to our fellow Canadians, we've got to stand up and we've got to speak out. Oh, and I think anybody who sees this movie will see that we need a public inquiry. Uh, it's right there on film. Great documentary, everybody should see it. With these messages, you can't broadcast any of these things on the mainstream media because your job isn't to educate the people as to what people here at the G20 actually think. It's to portray us as violent, dangerous criminals. Well, that's what we want to do. We want to make Give me the word out, man. Make copies. Get the word out, people. Make some copies. We want to wake everybody up. Thank you to The Real News and everybody that was here. And would you uh, recommend the G20 Exposed uh, movie? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, if you want to see uh, truth uh, behind what happened, not just the TV images uh, brought to, you know, by the mainstream media, you've got to see this, this G20 movie. It's fantastic. All right, check out Toronto, g20exposed.ca. People have sacrificed themselves to make this country what it is. And this, these Canadian Charter Rights and Freedoms were made because people sacrificed. So when they're taken away, that paper is only as good as the government says it is. So when it's taken away, we got to stand up and say, hey, listen, I want people to see this movie. I'm passionate about it. I want them to see the truth. I want them to see chronologically what happened during the events of G20. If you see this movie, it's going to act, it's going to feel like you were at G20. So um, it's about getting the truth out, and that's more important, you know? So we got it into the Ontario Parliament. Toronto G20 Exposed on CA. Uh, and there is a movie. There it is. Went to Parliament. I can't believe that this movie went to Queen's Park and they uh, they give us a plug. That was awesome. Really. You guys uh, keep it up, Derek Adams. Good to uh, good to hear from you guys again. Your film uh, is is doing well. It's waking up a lot of people to the issues that took you know that happened here in the G20. So uh, you know, great great job, uh, you guys too. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. You know what? It wouldn't be possible if it, uh, if it wasn't for Dan and Press for Truth because we uh, commend the independent media for bringing out these facts to the Canadian public. Well, we're all in this together, right? Exactly. I mean, it, you know, we, we, we got to get, get the word out there to the people, and, you know, that's the bottom line. That's, that's what it's all about. Toronto G20 Exposed, um, great new film. It's up on YouTube. You can go to youtube.com slash Toronto G20 Exposed. The G20 Exposed documentary. Unfortunately, a number of people in groups that were heavily infiltrated by the police um, created a situation in which the cops and the Harper government can point to uh, isolated acts of violence against uh, store windows and police cars, which the police tolerated. In fact, they watched while these acts were carried out in order, in order to attempt to justify their enormous expenditures uh, on so-called security issues. There were weaknesses within the riot police uh, line and hmm. it was just very interesting to see that the biggest uh, the biggest weakness in the riot police line was at Bay Street which makes no sense in my mind. It, it either shows that the police were completely incompetent in maintaining uh, uh, a line of defense or they actually purposely allowed the Black Bloc to go south along Bay Street towards King and Bay Street, where you saw, where I'm sure many people saw, uh, the flaming cop cars, the destruction, and the violence. Right, right, and that's you know that's why you'll find the Toronto Tree Seekers uh, downtown on on Saturday uh, afternoons with signs saying like uh, G20 was a staged event, G20 riots were a staged event. Are you saying that uh, that there was just some gaps in the riot line, or were you saying that there was no riot cops at all at King and Bay? Or there were there were none. There were 
absolutely zero riot cops at King and Bay Street or at Bay Street. And they basically had to bus in um, from what I saw in order to contain the situation when cop cars were lit on fire. And so the police cars were basically a good photo op for, uh, for all these big uh, media corporations in that, eh? So that was all staged. So the G20 was all staged, you could tell. Within a split second of me turning my head and turning the camera onto this police officer, uh, he swatted the camera out of my hand, um, at which it spun to the ground. Um, and they can't prove it, but he did uh, step on the camera. The camera landed uh, lens up. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so I, you can see at the very end of the clip uh, a police boot coming down on the lens. There has been zero dollars spent to protect the people of this city from the abuse of authority by those who are employed for security. And if a man could have been brutally attacked, brutally thrown head first into a concrete on an allegation that he was urinating, imagine if I was protesting, I would probably be dead. And then for the G20 summit recently, um, you know, I was postering and flyering uh, like a maniac before it, during it, and, and after it to make sure it never happened again because I saw that as the most traumatic event in this city's history where, you know, 20,000 cops, troops, mercs, and spooks were sent to lock down this city like a giant prison, kick us out of downtown for a week in the summer. Um, and, and, you know, I see how our police has acted before then and, and, and since then. And they don't normally act like they did at the G20 summit. It is a $45 million lawsuit against uh, Toronto Police. One of the major lawsuits that's occurred because of the G20. Another major lawsuit right here. Officer Bubbles sues YouTube. Understand? Multiple YouTube users, YouTube commenters, and people that made these Officer Bubbles cartoons here are in trouble. And he's suing YouTube for $1.2 million, going after the biggest corporation on the internet. At Google. <laughs> Officer Bubbles is uh, going after cartoonists now. He's cartoon is, cartoons are now assault. Uh, po political free speech is now under attack. But I mean, that's why it sets the precedent that we need to get the information out. And if you want to check out the video, it's torontog20exposed.ca. And uh, we're Calling going all to CKLN be listeners and supporters. This is a crucial time at CKLN, and we need your help to keep the station and its diverse programming on air for another year. Every fall, we ask you to show your support. Funfest 2010 starts Friday, November 19th, and ends Sunday, November 28th. All the programs at CKLN will be asking you to call in and make pledges, and there will be tons of prizes, giveaways, and raffles. There isn't really a Canadian economy anymore. It is a global economy.